Hello and welcome. You're watching Big Picture with me, Vishal Dahiya. And Saturday is Raj Sabha Day. In fact, the upper house of parliament, that is Raj Sabha, was constituted on 3rd of April 1952. And since then, it has contributed to the welfare and progress of the country in many ways. Also known as Council of States, the Raj Sabha reflects the federal character of our polity and protects the rights of the states. Today, we're going to talk about the history, role, evolution, as well as the road ahead as far as Rajya Sabha is, the upper house is concerned. And for more on this, we're joined by two distinguished panelists. Let me introduce them to you, beginning with Mr. Chakshu Roy. He's head of outreach at PRS Legislative. And we're also joined by senior journalist, Mr. K.B. Prasad, who's been covering the proceedings there in the parliament for quite a long time now, understands both houses and specifically the upper house much better. Let's uh, begin, uh, uh, gentlemen, and uh, uh, you know I welcome both of you to this uh, debate. But let's begin by understanding uh, the history uh, of the creation of upper house of uh, the parliament. That's Rajya Sabha. And let's let let, let me start with you. Uh, you know, Chakshu. Uh, let's uh, look at uh, the facts there in terms of uh, how actually the upper house was uh, born. Uh, uh, the journey for a bicameral legislature in our country started from about 1918-1919, uh, you know, when, uh, when in the House of Commons and in, in the UK Parliament a bill was passed to establish a bicameral legislature in the country uh, after the Montagu Chelmsford reforms. Uh, that system of bicameral legislature continued uh, when you know the Government of India Act of 1935 was formed. And after independence, uh, uh, when the constitution was adopted, we uh, became a parliamentary democracy with a bicameral legislature. Uh -huh. Now, during the framing of the constitution, uh, there were differences of opinion about the fact as to whether as a country, we needed a bicameral legislature. There was one opinion, which was that uh, a second chamber will only slow down uh, legislative activity. It would impede uh, development in the country. And it was, it was also going something that was going to be uh, a cause of drain on the exchequer. Uh, so that was the arguments against uh, setting up a, uh, an upper house. Uh -huh. uh, and uh, members of the Constituent Assembly like Gopal Swami Gayander, they, they vehemently advocated the idea of an upper house and said that an upper house would not only aid to the deliberations, but would also uh, act as what is called a house of check. Now, over the last 69, 70 years, uh -huh. uh, Rajya Sabha has not only you know, added to the deliberations uh, whether it is on legislation, whether it is on constitutional amendments, whether it is national issues, but it has also helped uh, set, correct the course of legislation which comes from Lok Sabha, which originates from Rajya Sabha. Okay. Uh, in fact, uh, the name Rajya Sabha itself is the Hindi uh, version. And uh, uh, when the House started in 1952, it was called the Council of States. Uh, in 1954, I think uh, uh, it is when uh, the name Rajya Sabha was said as the Hindi translation. Yes, yes, you are right, uh, Mr. Chakshu. That happened in August 1954. There. Now, if we look at uh, uh, look at the legislative journey and look at the differences between the two houses, very often uh, it is said that uh, Rajya Sabha and Lok Sabha have equal powers. They do have equal powers. But there are certain circumstances in Raj, when Rajya Sabha has some additional powers other than Lok Sabha. So, for example, uh, the constitution gives Rajya Sabha the power that if there is a two-third majority agrees in Rajya Sabha, then uh, a law can be made on a subject under the state list uh, because Rajya Sabha is, is a house of the states. Uh -huh. uh, Rajya Sabha uh -huh. also has the power to set up all India services. Uh, uh, that's another power of Rajya Sabha. And finally, uh, uh, broadly, when there are uh, proclamation under emergencies made and, and the lower house is not there, uh, Rajya Sabha also has the power to extend that proclamation, you know, for a certain period of time uh, till the other house uh, convenes. The only difference, you know, so to say, between the Lok Sabha and the Rajya Sabha is 
money bills don't get introduced uh, uh, in the Rajya Sabha. So it has limited powers when it comes to uh, issues around taxation uh, and uh, budgetary matters. Uh-huh. Uh, but yeah. I also find it interesting that uh, in the past uh, and even now, uh, a number of our finance ministers have been members from Rajya Sabha. Uh, in fact, a number of our prime ministers have also you know, come from uh, Rajya Sabha. Definitely. So uh, in, in, my, in my view, when I look at this journey, I see Rajya Sabha playing a constructive role in parliamentary deliberation and legislative business, and also strengthening debate uh, in our legislature extensively over the last so many years. Okay, okay, indeed, that's that's quite an apt summary there, Chakshu. When uh, we're trying to uh, you know understand the origin of. Uh, bicameral legislature and specifically in Indian context, uh, the upper house there and the role it plays. But let me also bring in Mr. K.B. Prasad. Mr. Prasad, uh, you've, you've seen it uh, from the press galleries, uh, you know, for quite uh, a long period now. So uh, if you could make us understand, uh, you know, this, this journey of upper house uh, in India or Rajya Sabha and the significant role it has played so far, some of the uh, points which you mentioned there by Chakshu as well. But if you to look at the highlights also, uh, you see, one of the most important things that the Rajya Sabha has uh, been doing and uh, continues to do is the oversight of legislation and also the deliberations and discussions which take place at its own pace. Now, one of the advantages is because unlike the House of uh, the Lok Sabha or the House of Representatives of People's, uh, this, uh, the, this chamber has the advantage of the numbers are smaller. Mm -hmm. And the deliberative time is available where members deliberate at length. Uh, In fact, to give you a very equivalent uh, or some kind of an analysis or analogy, uh, it is equivalent to what is said as the senatorial author in the United States of America, where the U.S. Senate takes its own time to uh, go through the lawmaking process. And one of the uh, very famous anecdotes that is part of the U.S. Senate chambers is when George Washington and Thomas Jefferson conversation was happening and uh, the same one of the same arguments is that lawmaking would get delayed, unnecessary. Uh, so he was. This example is given when the tea is hot, you pour, pour it in a saucer and allow it to cool down. The whole idea is if a legislation is made uh, and gets through the Lok Sabha, which has the majority and numbers to its advantage, and if a government of the day uh, tries to get a legislation passed, uh, the Lok Sabha can take its own time to. Um, Study it in a much more detailed fashion and mm-hmm. bring to uh, 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 you know bring itself to apply, apply itself to the task. And this has happened many a time in the past. In fact, several bills, uh, even in the recent past, uh, if you remember, were referred to the Senate committees after the Lok Sabha had been cleared because members in Rajya Sabha had a different uh, understanding of the the emergence of that bill, the various contours of it. And this is also after the scrutiny was taking place in standing committees and so on and so forth. Mm-hmm. So the deliberative portion and the deliberative aspect of Rajya Sabha can never be undermined. And that has always come into play time in the game. So that is something, uh, the whole thing is you don't rush through a legislation, allow the process to go in. Members from different walks of life, in fact, that uh, Rajya Sabha, you know, also has a, uh, about one dozen nominated category who represent various fields and, uh, uh, of eminence. So that also adds to the luster of the thing. And many a time it has been noticed because of the kind of composition of the house, the quality of debate itself has varied uh, in both the chambers. Uh, okay. Having said that, it, so it's, uh, it's very important that the del- due deliberative process takes in Rajya Sabha has seen a different kind of uh, uh, as we go along, I can give you two or three examples where the Council of State asserted itself uh, and left a mark on a parliamentary agenda. Okay, okay, indeed, uh, uh, you know, uh, we, we, we'll we'll come to those examples as well. And uh, let me let me begin with the, uh, you know, uh, Chakshu here in terms of you know uh, the aspects, various aspects of the deliberative role, Chakshu. Over the years, if we have to look, you know, what might be the key highlights, key legislations or key debates, key discussions which we can attribute to the upper house in terms of bringing in that change which is or which was uh, the need of the hour at that point in time? So, uh, Vishal, an interesting aspect of Rajya Sabha has been that Rajya Sabha has always, as as Prasad sir pointed out, acted as that act of 
uh, you know, uh, a, a checking mechanism on hasty legislation by Lok Sabha. Mm-hmm. But on a number of occasions, the government has also used Raj Sabha as a mechanism for introducing legislation which it wants to con- which it uh, wants to continue uh, beyond its term. So, as you know, uh, Raj Sabha is a continuing chamber; uh, it never ends. Uh, so, if a piece of legislation is introduced in Rajya Sabha and is not passed uh, in the term of one government, that legislation continues on to the term of the second government. Uh-huh. Interestingly, uh, uh, one of the legislative highlights that I think you know uh, stand out for me is that the constitution provides a mechanism that if there is uh, uh, if there is a deadlock between the two houses over a piece of legislation. Uh, and then that deadlock can only be uh, solved by holding a joint session of two houses. And the first time this deadlock happened was on the Dowry Prohibition Bill in 1961, when Rajya Sabha made certain changes to a bill that was passed by Lok Sabha. Uh, those changes were not uh, agreed to by Lok Sabha, and a joint sitting of the two houses was called. Uh, interestingly, uh, uh, there were there have been occasions on which. Uh, but Rajya Sabha has also disapproved of a you know constitution amendment bill. Uh, one bill that was later passed, but you know stands out as one example, is the uh, ob- abolition of privy purses. Uh, the constitutional amendment. I think it lost. It was uh, 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 the Treasury benches lost that vote by about I think one vote in uh, Rajya Sabha. Uh-huh. The other aspect has been that Rajya Sabha has also taken the lead when it comes to private member legislation. So uh, in 2015. Uh, the last private member legislation that was passed in our parliament was in Rajya Sabha when uh, uh, the Tiruchi Sabha's uh, bill on transgender rights uh, was passed by the upper house. Now, okay, if you if you if you go beyond uh, legislation, Rajya Sabha has played an important role in highlighting national issues. So whether it is through debates on the motion of thanks in the president's address, or through independent debates. so for example i remember even in even in the current session there was debates uh, on uh, on a women's reservation in parliament uh, there have been debates on stg that have happened uh, mm-hmm. in the uh, in the upper house one final thought that i have about uh, uh, rajya sabha especially when it comes to deliberation and prasad sir pointed this out is the diversity of voices that come in so yes there are you know 12 nominated members who each of them you know brings their own specialization Uh, so, for example, there has been former RBI governors. There have been uh, uh, eminent personalities uh, uh, from the arts uh, and the culture. Many of them have contributed extensively to debate. So, for example, uh, Mr. Javed Akhtar uh, was a member of the House, and when the copyright amendment bill was being discussed, he brought in insights uh, 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 for recording artists as to what what did copyright law meant for them. Mm-hmm. So that's another aspect of Rajya Sabha that's come in, okay. and since Rajya Sabha members don't have to worry about uh, elections and about constituents as such, they have more time to participate in the debate. They have more, uh, uh, they have more to give to the uh, to the richness of the debate that happens in the upper house. Okay, indeed, and and bring in more nuanced uh, approach uh, to uh, those issues there as well. Uh, some of them mentioned by Chakshu. Uh, few more can be added, like uh, recently we've seen several debates on the issue of agriculture and farmers. Also, uh, uh, Mr. Prasad, uh, you know, uh, uh, would you like to add more to this list uh, which has been mentioned uh, by uh, Chakshu there in terms of uh, key issues being debated or key legislations being initiated or passed in the upper house? Uh, or you know perhaps maybe you'd like to elaborate on some of them uh, given your experience uh, from there in the press gallery yeah i think uh, three issues i would like to flag and three bills or three debates which i think have uh, really ca- been uh, characterizing the way in which rajya sabha in particular has left its impression and mark on parliament and law making process itself Uh, if you go back to 1995, uh, somewhere in the country when we were discussing and debating the WTO, the World Trade Organization, this was the GATT Dunkel draft agreement which was in the works. Uh, <clears throat> there was whole argument in this country as to because much of the GATT and the what became the WTO is mm-hmm. the rights of the states. States started protesting that uh, the center having the overriding power, the executive having the power to enter into a sovereign treaty. but the states 
were affected directly in terms of agriculture vis-a-vis -vis the WTO argument. So this whole debate began in this country as to uh, how much should states allow or should states have a say in such a policy matter where its rights are being affected by a, a, a executive action. So this whole debate began that time. And I think that debate continued in different form and fashion. By the time we arrived at 2004, 2005, 2005, 6, when this country was thrown into a, one another big debate on the nuclear debate, the civil nuclear deal with America. And that's when, again, we heard the same uh, the voices asking, uh, should not the state, should not the, the, how much of power should the executive have, especially on enacting such a thing. And mm -hmm. Rajya Sabha uh, members took a very, very, uh, I would say, a pivotal role they played in trying to shape the debate, trying to bring up the argument, so much so that eventually, you know, the, of course, the bill, uh, 2005 onwards to 2008, we've seen the uh, conference motion and so on and so forth. But one of the spin-off of that, if I would take it forward, is the 2011 uh, civil nuclear liabilities bill, wherein the Rajya Sabha asserted its position and built in a very, very strong safeguard. Of course, it also had the backdrop to it, the Fukushima nuclear disaster. Mm -hmm. uh, so in the backdrop of it, the Rajya Sabha really made a very, very tight civil nuclear liabilities bill, which uh, still has the government of the day grappling as to how do you handle the fallout of that. Okay. The implications of that are being unraveled. And finally, and lastly, from 1995, let us come down to 2015, and why I'm saying this 20 years is 2015, Rajya Sabha, the right of the states, was very happily uh, kind of given away when the houses agreed on the GST. The constitutional change where the goods and services tax, major financial reforms in this country, and the debate took place. By then, you see, if you look at this whole 20 years time, you'll realize how uh, the Rajya Sabha had a different role to play in this debate and discussion. So this is an evolution process. And I'm sure as we go along, uh, the deliberative chamber and the, uh, and the deliberations that happen on many other issues concerning the rights of the state, something like we are just seeing the question of agriculture, this is bound to happen, is my understanding. Okay, definitely. You know, evolution is uh, uh, their uh, role, uh, you know, road ahead and obviously plays a very, very important role uh, in the way things are being looked at uh, in the parliament as well as in the society as well. Let's now look at, you know, uh, some very uh, recent aspect. And, and, you know, if you look at uh, Chakshu, I'd like to start with you. Uh, the past four, four and a half odd years, uh, if you're looking at, you know, 10 uh, uh, sessions and uh, almost around 199 sittings. How do you see, you know, things moving along in these uh, particular years or during these sittings? There have been several changes which have been brought about. Uh, one of the key elements might be the use of regional languages. Uh, we've seen how regional languages are more used right now. Then uh, obviously, you know, the, uh, the use of the role of standing committees there as well. Vishal, you're right. I mean, if, if we look at the last uh, uh, four, four and a half years, uh, there has been significant changes uh, in the working of the Rajya Sabha. Now, uh, Rajya Sabha has always been a chamber which has done things uh, slightly differently. Uh, so, for example, even before the, uh, the four and a half years period that you mentioned, uh, the question hour on Lok Sabha starts at a particular time, uh, you know, in the term of uh, Vice President Hamid Ansari, uh, the, one of the things that he did was that he changed the flipped the question hour so as to uh, reduce uh, disruptions. Now, in the last four and a half years, you're right, uh, two distinct things have happened. One is related to use of language. Uh, our chairman has, uh, on a number of occasions, expressed and also made available to members a number of uh, mechanisms in which not only can they express themselves in their local languages, but the rest of their colleagues can also hear them uh, with simultaneous translation, which is you know provided on the floor of the house. Mm -hmm. Then comes the question of standing committees. Uh, I remember in, I think it was a year, a year and a half ago, uh, where uh, the chairman uh, was fairly anguished and he stood up in the house and he uh, actually read out statistics about how Rajya Sabha committees uh, were not doing as well, uh, and there was a dip in the attendance of members in those committees. 
And then uh, he made it almost his mission to ensure that the functioning of these committees could be fixed. Uh, and, uh, you know, he kept uh, putting out statistics about the functioning, how many members were coming, uh, what was the quorum, uh, how many meetings were held. And even in the budget session of parliament, uh, he read out a detailed statement about the work done by standing committees. So that's one area of uh, focus that the Rajya Sabha has had uh, for the last four and a half years. Uh -huh. I think the other area of focus that Rajya Sabha has had as to how do you ensure the deliberation on the floor of the house uh, is uh, more nuanced and, and more and more people can participate. So I remember the chairman making a statement on the floor of the house as to we should, that the house should think of mechanisms to move beyond uh, just the distribution of minutes based on the strength of the political parties and then and that for some parties which are smaller in nature, a defined amount of time can be given so that they can they can uh, uh, express their voices uh, in in parliament. Uh -huh. uh, on on the issue of committees, I also wanted to put you know one uh, uh, thing that I've noticed on the Rajya Sabha website, which is I think which is a big step towards transparency. Now, if you go to the Rajya Sabha website and go to the standing committee section of Rajya Sabha website. You can actually see the members who attended uh, uh, the meetings of the parliamentary committees. And now that is a giant step in terms of transparency. So now uh, individuals like you, know, you me, Prasad sir, can actually look at as to which committee meeting at which members participating. And then you can question our members of parliament as to you know, what made you skip a particular uh, standing committee meeting. Uh -huh. uh, so I think those are great developments that have happened in the last uh, for four and a half years. Okay, okay. Mr. Prasad, your view on uh, the work done in the past uh, around four years and, uh, you know, those significant changes which have been brought about by the present chairman? Yeah, I think one of them uh, I would always appreciate and we find it very important is to try and make the questions very pointed <clears throat> because we have seen often in the past that members try to, you know, instead of asking a question, build around it the whole thing, try and give context life, so on and so forth, thereby losing the focus. You remember any time to come, a uh, question is a uh, question is a very important available to any member of parliament, irrespective of the position uh, or the party to which he or member belongs, to question the government and hold it accountable. And that's a very, very important 60 minutes that any member has. Mm -hmm. And to, if you have a very sharp question, which is focused and straight to the uh, hit the nail on its head, it gives the member and the country a very, very pointed answer. And if the member is able to corner the government in trying to say, then that you can, you can either make it realize that the member who is asking a question or the, or the minister who is responding is okay. inadequately prepared. So all these are very important because we need this time management, which Akshu was referring to in another context. But time management also pertains to a question hour, because 60 hours, 20 questions or 15 questions, that is the norm. And everybody is allowed supplementary. So it gets to, sometimes it could have become unwieldy. So that's one area in which I think a larger focus and attention is being paid. Uh, while also the other instruments that are already available, where you raise the issues of public importance in a, in a predetermined manner, the idea is to elicit a response from the government of the day. Uh, either there and then or at a later stage, because remember any time a member is sh assured in the house, it is immediately flagged to the assurance committee. So mm -hmm. the government of the day cannot get away by saying, oh, I assured the house and then does not respond, because the assurance committee will hold the minister or the ministry to a task as to this is the assurance here and what has happened. So these are, there are mechanisms and I, those mechanisms have been strengthened and should continue to strengthen. And I think this issue of uh, attendance marking and trying to, it's to ensure that the oversight, which is part of parliamentary practices, especially to the committee system, is maintained because much of the work of parliament is done in the committees. And Definitely. committees work in, in, and then the advantage is you do it in non-partisan manner. You are working above party lines in the larger picture is kept in mind. So I think that is a point that we need to, and I think the chairman, uh, Mr. Naidu needs to be complimented on the side that having been a member of the House for a pretty long time and also spent many number of years in opposition, he really understands uh, as to what needs to be done in terms of systemic reform to make the House far more effective in its function.
Okay, indeed, uh, those are really, really important aspects of the working of uh, the Upper House there. Thank you so much, uh, Mr. K.P. Prasad and uh, Mr. Chakshu Roy for sharing your views and insights with us and our viewers on this aspect of the role and evolution of Upper House in India, that is the Rajya Sabha. We'll come back again with a different topic and different set of guests. Till then, keep watching. Thank you.